Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Abby here. I am a professional makeup artist with alopecia, hence the bald head. Um, but today I wanted to jump in to a little bit of a favorites video. So this is kind of my yearly roundup of all the favorite products I had in the entire year of 2020, which was a shit show. Good riddance. Glad you're gone. Wanted to jump in and kind of start with some uh, base products and then I'll move into foundations, concealers, bronzers, blush, all that stuff. And then I'll get into some eyeshadow palettes. Um, there's a lot here. I literally have this cardboard box filled with stuff. So um, yeah, I just, I thought it'd be fun to do kind of a video like this where it's just makeup products. And then I would love to do a skincare one. So let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see that. I'll probably just make it anyways because I've had a lot of new discoveries, a lot of new favorites. Um, over the past year. So without further ado, let's just jump right in and get into the video. Okay, so like I mentioned, I wanna do a whole separate video on skincare and kind of like skin prep before I jump into makeup. Um, so that'll be following this video eventually sometime. So I guess I'll just go in order of how I do my makeup routine. So typically I like to start with a face primer. Um, this has by far been my favorite of the year. This is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. Um, they do have another version of this that is um, kind of like this in a pot form that's called the Silk Canvas. Uh, but this is the liquid version. This has been my favorite primer all year. I actually just picked this up um, in the fall for the VIB sale, but technically it's still 2020. So um, I've been loving this because it really just blurs my pores. Um, I have pretty deep pronounced pores, so I like to kind of smooth them out. But I also want a primer that's gonna really grip my makeup and help it last all day long. So this has been just that. It also feels like nothing on the skin. It feels like skincare. Um, so all those things combined, this is amazing, highly highly recommend it's a little pricey but um to me it's totally worth it i've had this for about three months now and i i'm not even close to done using it so highly recommend another great little kind of drugstore dupe for that is this elf matte pretty putty primer so this one is the matte version again they have another one that's just called the putty primer and that's going to be even um more I guess like glidey on the skin. This one's a little bit more matte, so it's really gonna grip the makeup, but I use the crap out of this. I, I literally am almost done with it. Um, it's super affordable. I think it's like five or six dollars at the drugstore or at Ulta. Um, and this was amazing for my Halloween series this year. For those crazy looks, I was using a lot of body paint, a lot of like heavy material on my face. And so I wanted something to kind of act as like a barrier in between my skin and the products and this was that and it's it's awesome to use for like those crazy more creative looks because it's not $52 it's five so this is what I was using throughout that whole season um, and it really smooths the pores and acts as like a gripping base so highly recommend love this guy as well so jumping into foundation I had three products I wanted to mention these are kind of like my top three favorites I would say of the whole year I couldn't pick just one but um, for a really like dewy radiant natural finish like juicy juicy skin which is how I love to keep my skin in the summertime uh, this Ilia super serum skin tint SPF 40 this actually has niacinamide and squalane in it um, but really really gorgeous finish I was very impressed with this so I wear the shade Diaz which is kind of my perfect color but um, this also has some sunscreen in it so just all around a really good kind of like tinted moisturizer look um, probably medium coverage, I would say, light to medium coverage. Not a ton if you're wanting to really like color correct or have anything like that, but um, overall I was really happy with this this year. My next favorite, which is definitely more of a um, medium to full coverage, I would say. This is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation and Skincare. I wear the shade 31 Medium Neutral, but this is just a um, really skin-like finish to me. This is like a true satin finish, so not too mattifying, um, but didn't ever get creasy on my skin and definitely gives a good amount of coverage. Um, this is what I'm wearing today, actually. So you can see it's still very radiant, um, still allows your skin to kind of come through. It's not just like a flat shield of foundation, um, but definitely on the, the medium coverage side. This doesn't have any SPF or anything in it, but um, yeah, I found that it wears really nicely underneath the mask as well, 
which is something that we're all paying attention to these days. So I wanted to show these foundations in the range of coverage, I guess. So like light to medium, medium to full, and then full coverage. This last one is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation Longwear Foundation and Concealer. So the cool thing about this one, I'm sure you guys already know about this, it's been talked about for years, um, but this is my go-to foundation if I want just like a flawless finish, like something to really cover um, any breakouts or anything like that. I also sometimes just use it as a concealer because it has this unique kind of system here. So you actually have a doe foot applicator that you can un, you know, unscrew and then just apply it to your face like that. Or if you screw this back on, it also has a pump, which is more sanitary. So this would be great for your kit if you're a working professional makeup artist as well. Um, but yeah, so this is my go-to for full coverage. It never lets me down. I always feel like my skin just looks insanely smooth and kind of like facetuned, if you will. But this one is another ride or die for full coverage. So for concealer, I actually have three favorites this year. And I know that sounds maybe a little excessive, but they're equally that good in different ways. So my favorite top number one used concealer, um, which has taken the place of my Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I used to love that one. Not really supporting Hourglass right now because of the whole shade thing that they're doing, but um, e.l.f. Cosmetics Hydrating Camo Concealer. Not to be confused with the Camo Concealer. This is the hydrating version. This is amazing. This is so full coverage. Um, it has a satin finish, so really, really natural, not too mattifying, but I just find that this never creases underneath my eyes and gives a really great um, brightening effect. This is in the shade Light Peach, which is perfect for me. Um, I find that like that peachy undertone really helps with any darkness I have under the eyes, uh, but I'll use this to spot conceal as well. Really, really good. Um, it's also like, I think four or $5 at the drugstore. Love this one. Another great one that is a little bit um, lighter coverage, but if you let it kind of set, if you apply it and let it kind of set down a little bit, it can be more of a medium to full coverage. This is the Revealer Concealer from Kozas. So this is another really gorgeous concealer. Um, very lightweight and hydrating on the skin. I never find that this looks um, chunky or cakey. It just, it basically is like a skincare in a concealer. It's so hydrating. So great for underneath the eyes. Um, typically for my face, I like a little more coverage. This is more of, um, I would say a true like light to medium finish, but I, I find that that's perfect for underneath my eyes. So love this guy as well. Definitely more on the pricier side, but worth it because this never runs out. And they also have a really diverse shade range. Another concealer I really wanted to mention was this Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Longwear Concealer. Such a long name, but um, this guy's awesome. This is my perfect shade in C9. This guy is so, so good. I really find that it, um, it brightens any darkness that I might have really well. Um, but the most interesting thing about this one for me is it actually has niacinamide in it. So niacinamide is a skincare ingredient that helps over time to kind of reduce the appearance of pores. It helps with oil control. Um, not as strong as something like salicylic acid or um, benzoyl peroxide. It's not drying, but it does help to kind of control oil production. So it's really interesting to me that this is um, actually in this concealer, which is great because you're applying concealer on breakouts or areas, you know, typically that you want to kind of like control or hide. Um, so I think it's awesome that that ingredient is in this. Um, this is also a long wear concealer. So this is a 16 hour wear full coverage concealer for sure. Um, but this is again from the drugstore, maybe $10 or so. Highly, highly recommend. The shade C9 is my perfect one and I love this so much. Okay, so next I wanted to share some contour products, some cream contours that I have discovered this year that have made a big difference in my routine. I didn't really used to contour much with creams in the past, but this year, um, I've, I don't know, I've noticed my skin is changing a little bit and I'm trying not to use as many powders as I used to in the past. Um, I used to just go in with a, you know, a powder contour or whatever. Now I'm loving doing contour in between my foundation and my powder. So I'll go in with these cream contours right after I do foundation and kind of shape the face and then I'll powder everything down. Um, but the first one I wanted to mention is actually a concealer and this is from Maybelline. This is the Instant Age Rewind Eraser in Deep Bronze, shade 149. This guy is awesome. This is such a unique tone. It's definitely got a little bit of warmth to it but you can see like as it diffuses and blends out a bit, 
It definitely is a great uh, contour for someone of my uh, skin tone. Another thing that I'll do is I'll use this to contour my nose and I like how small and precise it is. So I'll just go underneath like that and then I'll start here in the bottom, like near um, the tip of my nose and then I'll just lightly like flick up and then blend up with a sponge. And it's a nice quick little uh, nose contour. So love this guy. Also very affordable at the drugstore. Another great option for cream contour are these Fenty Beauty matchsticks. So this one is in the shade Amber. It is a very, very cool tone. Um, contour almost like ashy i would say you can see the color difference there but this is definitely truly cool toned almost too cool for my liking if i'm being totally honest i was really excited to try this out i uh, picked it up this year and originally i thought it was too cool toned but the way that i actually just use this is i warm it up on the back of my hand like this and i'll just use it on my finger and i'll use that to kind of contour certain areas of my face if i want a more kind of shadowed look so i have been wearing this a lot and loved it this whole year so the last cream contour product i wanted to mention was the tan tour from huda beauty huda 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 beauty I don't know how to say it, but um, I don't really use any of the products from Huda Beauty. I just feel like they're typically catered towards more of that like Instagram makeup vibe. And uh, as I've gotten older, I lean more and more away from that and more to kind of like natural finishes and stuff like that. But um, I do really love this product so much. I like to take this on my little Mac brush. What is this? The 187S, 873 it's almost rubbed off but this little flat brush from Mac and I'll actually just dip straight into this and use this to kind of contour my nose the sides of my cheeks this product formula is incredible it blends so so seamlessly I'll show you the color too the color for me is just perfect it's like if these two ones had a baby it's this one, which is my perfect color. Um, this is in the shade Fair, by the way. They have a few different shades. But this not only lasts all day, like it truly is waterproof, um, but it also blends like a dream. So you can apply this with your fingers. You could apply it with a brush, like I was talking about. Um, you could go in with a damp beauty sponge and just apply it like that. But for me, this tone is perfect. It's kind of a blend with a little bit of warmth, like that first one, um, but a little bit of coolness, like the amber matchstick as well. So I love this for all over the face, all bronze. I've taken my big fluffy brush that I used to uh, bronze my head and I'll just dip in and it just blends un unreal. It blends better than any product I've ever used. So highly, highly recommend this. This was definitely a favorite of 2020. Okay, so moving into powder now. There's three little powders that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I use lots of different powders. I have a ton of them in front of me to just kind of like, I don't know, use in a creative look or something like that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, these were the three that I use the most often. So um, this first one is a loose powder, meaning that it's just loose in here. Um, but this is the Ultra Loose Powder in Translucent from Face Atelier. This powder is a dream. It goes under the eyes so seamlessly and blurs any lines. Um, it does have a little bit of pigment to it. I wouldn't say that it's truly translucent. It's got a light tone to it, but um, this is beautiful. In addition to that, uh, they make a pressed version. So this is the pressed powder in the shade Too Light. And this is another one of my favorites. This is obviously loved and very used. So what I'll actually do sometimes with this pressed powder is just take a damp beauty sponge and I'll just dip right into this powder and lightly press it in. And I'll use that to kind of like cut out my um, jawline and then just tap it away. So I'm not truly baking, but I'm using it to kind of define that area. And that works really, really well for me. So I love to use this powder for that reason. It's incredibly finely milled, so beautiful. And if you are a professional makeup artist and you have a pro discount, these guys offer a great pro discount too. The last little powder I wanted to just quickly give an honorable mention is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD powder. This is obviously just the mini size, um, but I got this for free with the Sephora Rewards, the VIB rewards. So this powder I've had and I've purchased multiple different times. Um, I keep a full one stocked in my professional kit when I work on clients. Um, but this little mini size has been great because I like to use this with a small, um, this is just a little Cosette 165 brush, but this is just a 
a great powder to dust under the eyes and this truly is like a veil for the skin this is a, like a great finishing powder to just kind of set everything um, dust off any imperfections and blur the pores you could use it with a bigger fluffier brush I like to use it with my Charlotte Tilbury powder and sculpt brush too and I'll just dip in and just go through my t-zone my cheeks under the eyes and the chin and just do that throughout the day. But this is such a great powder, highly underrated. I know people used to complain about the fact that it um, gave off like a white cast. That's only if you like bake with it. Don't bake with it, it's not meant for that. I think it's beautiful if you just kind of dust it all over the face. So wanted to give that a little honorable mention because it's been an oldie and a goodie for years, but this year I've kind of like rediscovered it and fallen in love with it again. Okay, so diving into some bronzers here, I wanted to share a few of my favorites. Um, this year I rediscovered my love for the Fenty bronzers, not the cream ones. I have the cream one. Um, it's okay. I don't find that I use it very often. I thought it was nice for summer, but this one, um, the powder bronzer, the sun stalker bronzers are my all time favorite. So this is shady biz. This is a perfect tone for like a golden warm bronzer, true bronzer. Um, I also use in the sun quite a bit, which is the shade lighter than that in the range. Um, both have really gorgeous finishes and are really, really high quality bronzers. I will repurchase these forever. Another one that I wanted to mention, um, I kind of rediscovered at the end of 2020, but this is the Pure Bronzing Act bronzer. These are incredible. They fold all the way flat. So if you're a working makeup artist, you can lay this on the table underneath something or kind of like layer things up. Um, it also compacts really, really thin for your kit. But um, I wanted to mention this mainly because the color is so perfect. So this is kind of like my perfect color of bronzer. I just like to take a big fluffy brush or my, my bronzer brush and I'll just kind of swirl a little bit of product through. And I like to just add it along the cheeks like this, but it's kind of like, for me, that perfect tone between a contour and a bronzer. And when it comes to bronzer, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I don't really want something to give me like warm, glowy-ness, I guess. I want something that's gonna be a little bit more like defining and that's gonna dust the cheekbones and make them look sun-kissed, but also give me like some shape and some definition to my face. Um, and this does just that. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. This is in the shade light. There's a few different shades. This one is my favorite. Um, you can see it's got kind of these different hues. There's some light and some dark hues in here, but um, those all mixed together are my perfect shade. I love this. It also smells like chocolate. For blush, I had a few favorites. Um, this was one I used all year long. This is the Graftobian blush palette, uh, yeah, high def cream brush, high def cream blush palette. So this has five different shades and they're all absolutely stunning. I think the one that I use the most, um, were on these ends. Yeah. Peach and Vienna Rose. These are my most used shades, but, um, if you're a working makeup artist, this would be another great one to add to the kit because it definitely has some ranges here um, and I know they make a lot of different tones of um, of these blush palettes too. For powder blushes there are two favorites I wanted to mention and the first one is from elf cosmetics. This is the powder blush in always cheeky. It is like the perfect kind of like soft peach color. Um, that's my favorite type of blush. I either go for like a neutral nude blush or a peachy one. I don't really like like bold pinks or deep mauves or mauve or whatever that shade is that has more purple tone to it. Um, I really like peachy blushes that kind of like warm up my face. So this one is great. I find that this lasts throughout the day and it's also like three or four dollars. The other one that is very similar in tone, but maybe even more peachy is this one from um, Flower Beauty. This is in the shade Peach Primrose. I've been talking about this for years, really since it came out, but it's got a rose imprint, kind of like the Milani blushes. Um, but this shade is one of my all-time favorites. Um, I've gone through at least three of these by now. I use this daily, all the time. It's a staple. Um, it's not new in 2020, but this was something I used all the time in 2020. So for highlighters, I also had three favorites. This is like a weird 
thing that I must subconsciously do is have like three favorites in each category. I don't know why that is, but um, my three favorite highlighters I'm really excited to talk about. I have one that's kind of like a drugstore version and then two or two that are more on like the higher end side. Um, so the first one I wanted to mention is this one from Makeup Obsession. This is called Mega Destiny Highlighter. This is kind of like a baked highlighter but you can see it is just so, so pretty. I'll show you a little swatch here. It is seriously so stunning. It is a metallic, gorgeous, like shimmer highlighter. Um, you can build this up for it to be more intense, or you can just apply this with a damp sponge and it can be like more diffused. But I like to use this in the high points of my face just to add a little bit more dimension. This is also the perfect dupe, in my opinion, for MAC Soft and Gentle, which is the other one on my list. So MAC Soft and Gentle has been a staple in my kit for years. I've always had a backup, just in case. Um, you can see the tone here is a little different. The MAC Soft and Gentle is a little bit more like um, soft pinky, whereas this one has a true like champagne gold finish both have a really similar um, baked finish. So highly recommend both of these. MAC Soft and Gentle, I would say, is almost the same finish, but just a little bit more softly milled, if you will. So I thought I'd just do like a side-by-side -side swatch comparison so you can see. Here is MAC Soft and Gentle. And then here is the Makeup Obsession Mega Destiny. This one might even be more, yeah, a little more metallic, a little more intense. So the MAC one is a little bit more finely milled and just a smoother powder because it's MAC. Um, but this guy at the drugstore was like five, I think four or five dollars. Really cheap, really affordable, really good quality. Another highlighter I had to mention is the Benefit Cookie Highlighter. This has been one that I've been talking about for years. Another gorgeous like pinky champagne finish that personally is what works great for my skin tone. Um, but I love this formula. Compared to the other two, you can see that this one is a little bit more intense. This is the highlighter I go for when I want that like blinding look. Um, but you can always diffuse it whenever you want as well. I just like to go in with a little fluffy brush and you can just tap a tiny bit of product on and it really adds a lot of dimension right away. Really, really glowy and gorgeous. I just love this one so much. This will always be a staple in my kit. I have one in my professional kit as well as my personal kit too. So jumping into eyebrows now, um, you guys know I've talked about eyebrows a little bit here on this channel, but a lot over on Instagram where I'm a little bit more active these days. Um, and I've talked about this routine. I've had the same routine for my eyebrows for forever. Um, if you guys are new to the channel and you don't know, I have no natural eyebrows. I have alopecia totalis, which means that I don't grow any hair on my head clearly and I don't have any natural eyebrows or eyelashes either so um, I have to draw these babies on from scratch every single day um, and these are the products that I use to do that so the first one is the nude sticks um, brow stylist and this is in the shade ash brown but they have a bunch of different shades of these this is the only eyebrow product I ever carry in my professional kit because it is that good um, the unique thing about it is it actually has on one end a little crayon. This is kind of like the brow definer from ABH. If you can see, it's got a little um, angled tip there. So this is what I use to draw on the initial shape of the eyebrow. And then I'll go through with the other products. But this is like the base that I lay down. It's also waterproof. This lasts so, so long. So that's what I like to have as the base color for my eyebrows. And then I'll go in and add dimension and hair strokes and stuff like that. Check this out if you haven't already. I also have a code with nude sticks that I'll include down below that I think, yeah, I think I still do. I'll let you know. So similar to that last one, I also wanted to mention these two products. Um, both discoveries, actually, no, I think I discovered this one the year before, but this is the Brow Blade from Urban Decay. This one is currently dead. I don't have any more, but this is basically like the Brow Wiz from ABH. So really thin and precise, um, a really fine tip. You can use this to draw on your initial shape or just to fill in your brows if you're a normal eyebrow owner. <laughs> but um, the other side is really awesome because it is a pen. So it's a really precise little pen. You can use this to draw on little hair strokes. And this pen is also super water resistant. So it's not going to smudge or smear. It actually kind of stains your skin a little bit, just a heads up. But um, I love the shade Cool Cookie in this guy. Again, it's a really neutral tone for me. Um, 
yeah, works the best for my skin type. I also like to use this to draw on a little extra faux freckles and just tap them away. This is a great multi-use product that I'll always continue purchasing. The last little brow product I wanted to mention is this one from Billion Dollar Brows. They sent me a really sweet PR box. Um, this is basically the Brow Wiz, but with a really small, precise spoolie. And the colors that they have are perfect. These guys specialize in brows, and this is basically just a really fine tip little brow pencil, but I love this. The tone of this one is taupe. So it's just a really kind of neutral brown, but depending on how hard you press, how, the pressure that you use, you can get a really fine light color or you can press harder and get a really deeper color. So I love these guys. Um, also way more affordable than ABH. Okay, so before we move on to eyes, I wanted to mention one last um, complexion product because I'm definitely a complexion queen. I love to just do base makeup and like contouring and the cheeks and the, the foundation and all that stuff. I love, I love base makeup even more than eyeshadow these days, honestly. So um, I've been trying to find the most perfect um, setting spray forever and ever, and this is it, in my opinion. This is the best, most long-lasting, um, setting spray that I found. I used to be a diehard for the Urban Decay All Nighter. I don't even have it in front of me anymore because I stopped using it. This has completely replaced it. I have to figure out how to recycle it. But beyond that, this is awesome and I love it so, so much. It also is just really hydrating and refreshing. So even if you're not trying to like lock your makeup in all day, you could just spray a little bit less and it's just so refreshing and cooling, so. Love this for the summer and all year long. Okay, so we are moving on to eyes now. I wanted to quickly mention a few of my favorite eye primers. These are two that I just absolutely adore and I'll always come back to. The first one is my beloved Smashbox 24 hour uh, photo focus, photo finish eyeshadow primer. This guy is the MVP. This keeps my shadow on all day long. I have definitely found that with alopecia, sometimes my eyeshadow just like fades or my lids get oily. Something changed when I lost my hair. I definitely noticed that. And this is the only eyeshadow primer that to me really like locks in my makeup. This also lasts so long. I bought this at the beginning of 2020, maybe like January. And I just ran out in December. I just repurchased this new one. There are actually a lot of different palettes that I would love to mention, but I wanted to pick just a handful. This is still already probably too much, but I'm just gonna tell you because I want to, and I'm really excited about these, and I've gotten so much use out of these palettes this year. This is the Fun Size palette from Sugar Pill. These little colors are so fun, very fitting. Uh, they're really, really bright, but they're still kind of like a pastel, color scheme. So I really love this kind of chartreuse green mustardy color. Um, and then all the other ones I've been using a ton this year as well. Definitely for more of my creative looks. I use this a lot. Um, I wish it was a little bigger for the price, but um, hopefully you can find it. It's been sold out on Ulta forever, but highly recommend that. The formula of sugar pill eyeshadows are always gorgeous. The next one I wanted to show you guys is the On The Run uh, palette from Urban Decay. This is the Detour palette. I actually just picked up a brand new one of these at the Sephora sale because this was on sale. Um, this shade Switchback is one of my all-time favorite eyeshadows ever. It is just such a pretty color. Um, it has this like gorgeous duochrome finish. Uh, the golds in here are stunning as well. Urban Decay, I kind of stopped buying their makeup palettes because I have too many eyeshadow palettes and I don't need more. But this is one that I wanted to repurchase and this is the brand new fresh one. I have another one here right in front of me as well. Um, but this one I wanted to restock on before it completely went out. Um, I don't know if they'll bring it back, but this is just such a great little palette. If I'm going to go on a trip and I'm just bringing one palette, I'm bringing this because it has some great transition colors. It's got a beautiful champagne to just put all over the lid. It's got like this orange, um, almost reminds me of orange soda from Makeup Geek. And it's got a fun pop of blue, a dark blue to put on the lower lash line, a gorgeous terracotta, a matte white to set the lid. It's just got 
all the best shades and then switchback is just the cherry on top for me so i love how teeny tiny this is this is smaller than my little hand i could throw this in my purse if i needed i love this eyeshadow palette so much another palette that i had to mention that i have been using a ton since i ordered it was it in october october november this came out um this is jamie genevieve's new brand called vive the palette is just so chic this is the same style so this is the essentials palette and i have been using this every single day this is all that i'm wearing on my eyes today I, I have gotten a ton of use out of this i just love the way that she designed this um especially in the order that you would probably use it like from light to dark um this has a gorgeous black every eyeshadow palette in my opinion needs a great black to just deepen to use as a smoky wing liner like a black is a great addition two different shades of browns, which this one, um, Lava Rock, is actually not as deep, or uh, not as cool tone as it seems. Um, I love the yellow. I love this like orangey color. The The pigment and the um, the press in these shadows is just gorgeous. They're so, so pigmented and they, they blend like a dream. I love this. I will be using this for a long time. I also love the mirror. There's a huge mirror on the back. So what you can actually do is just flip from one side to the other, dab into your color and then flip and apply. Genius, I love it. There is one pair of eyelashes that I wanted to mention. Um, I think I'm gonna do a whole roundup on my favorite eyelashes. I keep them in this little love scene tin, just kind of storing them to use all my favorites um, so they don't get smushed. I just keep this on my desk, but I think I'm going to do a whole separate video on lashes and my favorites to use with um, no eyelashes because I just uh, don't have any natural eyelashes. These have to just stick to my skin. So it's a whole different journey. But one pair I wanted to mention that I discovered in 2020 is the Hoodie Lashes from Huda Beauty. This is the only other thing I've ever tried from Huda Beauty and they're stunning. I think typically I just strayed away from Huda Beauty because I always saw the brand as being so Instagrammy and so like full glam and as I've gotten older I just lean away from that more but these lashes are so gorgeous. If you can see they have the most like natural fluffy lift to them and the way that the band is made makes them so unbelievably easy to apply. It's like they're they're nothing. It's like there is no band. It's hard to explain, but the band is basically invisible. <laughs> so a tiny bit of lash glue right on them and they pop right on and they're fluffy and dramatic and beautiful and I love them. We're almost done. I'm finally almost finished. Sorry this has taken so, so long, but we're getting there, getting there towards the end. The last um, section I wanted to talk about was lips. So 2020 for me was the year of not wearing a lot of lip product, if we're being totally honest. Um, we were all wearing masks, we were all adapting, we were all staying home, so I wasn't popping on a red lip just to hang out at home, if I'm being honest. So I wore a lot of nude lips or lip balm. The lip balm that I wanted to share with you guys is this one from Sunbum. This is the Key Lime flavor. This is my current favorite, but they make banana, like watermelon, lemon, all these different fun flavors, and they're so good. They also have SPF. 30. So if you're out in the sun, um, great sun protection. Four lip liners that I wanted to mention that I kind of fell in love with this year. This year for me was the year of like just doing a quick lip liner and the balm. I wasn't doing a whole lot of color. The one that I, I really expected to like more than I did, and I still love this. I still, it's obviously, it's in my favorites video because it's good, but this is the, um, this is the lip liner from Vive that I picked up and I really wanted this to be a little bit more cool tone. You can see it's kind of got like a peachiness to it. This is the shade Velvet Sands. I think it's her lightest shade. Um, this is the only lip liner that I picked up from Vive. Gorgeous, gorgeous packaging, gorgeous finish. It is like truly gonna stay on like wearing power like the MAC lip liners I would say. So really, really holds onto your lips. I just wish this was a little bit more cool tone. It pulls a little warm on me, but I still do like this and I, I have been wearing it a lot. The next one that I really like is the KKW Beauty Nude 2 Liner. This is one that I will use um, for a little bit darker of a tone, but it's got a really nice neutral undertone. It looks a little warm on camera, but um, this is a really good tone for me if I want like more definition. Second to last favorite is this one from Dose of Colors. I just picked this up on a whim. Uh, this is in the shade Dime and this is a really gorgeous, gorgeous color. 
um, is probably a little bit more like mauve than the first two, but still like a really good neutral pink. So that's this one, Dime. My very favorite ride or die new lip pencil that I discovered in 2020, which I'm definitely late to the party on this side note. Everyone has been talking about this um, lip cheat from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Iconic Nude for like ever. And I just discovered it this year, but this is the uh, shade. It is my perfect nude color. So it is pulling really peachy on camera, but in real life, this is like the perfect nude color. It's nice and cool tone, but also still has like a, na a natural warmth to it. I can't describe it, but I hate lip liners that are like warm, that are like terracotta or have like notes of like pink. I don't want a pink lip. I want it to look like my lip color and my lip color is not like pinky. It's like nude. And so this is the best one that I found. It lasts all day long. It's beautiful. I used to never think it was worth the money. It's worth the money. You should get it. It's great. One gloss, the only gloss I'm going to talk about is from Olimar Cosmetics. This is birthday suit gloss. I'll just put it on so you guys can see, but this is like a nude, a nude lip gloss. It smells kind of like cake. It smells really good. Barely any pigment to it, even though it looks like a color. Um, it has the most like subtle sparkles in it, but just really gorgeous. And I've been loving this. I've been wearing this a lot. Okay, you guys, that is it. I think that is the full roundup of all my favorite makeup products of 2020. We made it through. That was so long. I'm really sorry. But um, yeah, those are my favorites. I think I want to do a separate video that is like favorite brushes, favorite skincare, I don't know. Should I break it up into categories? Tell me what you want. Tell me what you'd like to see. But I think I might break it up into categories because otherwise these videos will just be so long. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got some recommendations. I hope this was helpful. I know I had a ton of new favorites that I kind of discovered this year. And I also rediscovered a lot of old makeup this year that I had loved in the past, but kind of forgot about. So I, I rediscovered some of that this year, which was nice. Um, yeah, hang in there, you guys. Uh, hope you're doing well in the start of 2021. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this helpful or if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.